I, I want to share something, Tom, that's critical. Uh, the story of the conehead skulls being found in Mexico and the right. claim that it was done by parents. Let me tell you something. I've had guys who are some of the best anatomical sculptors in the world and forensic guys, and when they rebuild that conehead skull that was shown in the article from Mexico, there is no way that's head binding. In Montana, we have the Flathead Indians. You can deform a skull, but you cannot change the eye sockets, the jaw sockets, nor the cranial mass. In other words, you can change the shape of something, but it's fascinating because these go back directly into the time period that David Flynn used to write about in the Manet Manetto's Table of Kings prior to the creation of uh, Adam and Eve and the lizard-like, if you've ever seen the pictures of Quetzalcoatl, and yeah. all of the, and, and you touch on this too, the alien serpent race, this is identical to the face reconstructed of Quet the only known artist's conceptions from the 1500s described to those guys who could, you know, sketch and stuff, but that in no way is that head binding, and that's probably the most in-your-face uh, present excavation of aliens in the bottom line in Mexico, and when you look at all of the great pyramids and not what went on on them, the, the whole bottom line in the Aztec, Incan, and uh, Mayan culture is they were started by aliens, they were built by aliens, and all the blood sacrifice was just basically a day at the uh, lunch counter for the aliens that basically were able to stay out or stay in control through the technology they had. The reason that's critical is because that same thing now is turning up. I'll be sending you, Thomas, so I can get it in a, in a form I can send it. I just got it recently. Actual petroglyphs that people have not seen from the desert southwest that are so amazingly clear in showing that they're aliens. There's nothing human about them, not just the size, but the shape of the head is identical, and these things supposedly go back two to 4,000 years. Well, you know, here's the thing. Um, we all are familiar probably with the Smithsonian giant cover-up. Um, the, 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 we live in a period of time now where more and more it's becoming impossible for the powers that be to do what the Smithsonian did. We have people that go out and they dig into these burial mounds and get those giants that the Indians had talked about, and they get the bones and they take them into the Smithsonian and they hide them, or any other uh, uh, organization that is seeking to try to control man's idea about earth and earth history and the date of the earth and, and to try to make the world believe that the idea of the giants is something more than mythology. Um, but now with, you know, with uh, Google Earth and, and satellites that armchair astronomers can set there. In fact, there was a, there's an article today, I don't even remember the headline, but it's over on Raiders News Update where something like, 42 new alien worlds were just discovered by armchair astronomers. So more and more it's getting impossible for the um, powers to, that be to control uh, the flow of this information and the discovery of this information. And um, you, we know this, first of all, that they existed. There would be evidence of them that they existed. We also are increasingly of the persuasion that they exist on Earth now. I'm talking about living and breathing. Yes. And furthermore, we know if you believe the Bible, if you're a, if you're a biblical literalist like I am, we know that the Bible predicted that at the end times this would be one of the signs of the times, the return on Earth of the Nephilim. Um, the ancient Hebrews that translated the Septuagint into Greek understood that the prophet Isaiah, in chapters 13 and 14 of Isaiah, that he was predicting the return of the giants with monsters at the advent of the destruction of Babylon, which is something to still happen in the final age. And you and I have quoted and talked about that verse before, Isaiah 13, the, uh, Open the gates, ye ruler, I give command, and I bring them. Giants are coming to fulfill my wrath. The 16th chapter of the book of Enoch writes of the deceased offspring of the Watchers, the spirit of the giants, the Nephilim, as being released at the end of time to bring slaughter and destruction upon man. Um, uh, this comes to pass as part of God's day of uh, the Lord, or his great tribulation, when Satan and his angels punish the unbelieving world before they are resigned to the pit. And that particular prophecy mirrors Isaiah, it mirrors the, apoc the apocryphal works, 
that indicate there would be a future date in which watchers will rise for judgment, but the spirits of their giant offspring ahead of that are going to be remanifested upon earth to wreak havoc upon the earth. Uh, the Book of Jubilees, an ancient Jewish religious work, talks about this. Uh, what what other texts? Um, uh, well, Ezra, you know, you quoted uh, quite a few times, and a lot of what you've written is that your women will give birth to monsters. That's actually a verse that you turned me on to some years ago. Well, we both got it, and I forget who, but I mean, here's the thing that you're saying in a nutshell, and, and ladies and gentlemen, it is kind of funny, and you're seeing it in real time, the parallels... Could, this could not be orchestrated by anyone less than the Holy Spirit. Just as the evil presence in the earth, there, God is being faithful, raising up men and women, giving them the understanding that was sealed in Daniel's day, but it's being opened. And the thing that even uh, Sir Isaac Newton talked about, and Dave Flynn was the first fruits of having uh, stood upon the shoulder of the giants, the first to crack Newton's coal, a code, excuse me, and then he went home to be with the Lord, and now there are others who are, who are being given insights, and it's for this, it's because Jesus loves his children, he loves his people, he loves his creation, and there is a war of intergalactic proportion. Tom, I was told two years ago, just to put this into context, and we've talked, so I think you know what I'm referring to in, 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 in part, is that there was an attempt to break through literally the uh, things that we have in deep, deep space uh, by uh, an armada, and it was the advance uh, scouting party, and they were stopped. And interesting, I was told that, I was told maybe intentionally, I think it must have been intentionally now, and I broadcast it on, uh, on the radio, and some of you will remember the broadcast, it, it wasn't a fake war of the worlds, it was a real-time war of the worlds where I said a certain group of the MMB, Mighty Men and Valor, and, and had been told to stand down. Well, those guys who control the entities that are coming, or at least in communication, took that as mean they had a fair... Uh, rule and run up the planet. So God is still stopping them, and because of that statement, I guess the, a trap was laid. And, and again, people have a hard time wrapping their brains around this stuff. And I understand, you know, there, there's there it, it is so out of bounds of what we've been told. But in the world that they live in, what they talk of is the core C O R E reality, and what we live in is the illusory world of lies bloody lies and extreme lies. I won't use the other word, but that's where we live. And But the thing that you've been saying and I've been saying the longest is that we are now at the time where this is going. It's going by the book. It's going in, in a very uh, progressive and an accelerated rate. And when you've got, how many Catholics are there? And this isn't Catholic bashing. There are, what, a billion and a half people that are Catholics, and I don't think they understand the battle that they're going to be in, the traditional Catholics versus those who are going to uh, be tried to be swayed to accept the alien God. And I think that the time has come where, you know, people, I don't care what, uh, where they claim they've come from, they, when they say that whatever uh, tradition or, or religious background, they've got to get it right with Jesus because the deception is going to be so great. I'm getting emails. Is this a great deception Jesus talked about? Hello? Yes, it is.